All right, guys, so today I'm going to be showing you the lenses that I'm going to be using on my Micro Four Thirds camera in 2021. So let's get into the video. All right, guys, Neil from Neil Collins Recording. Welcome to my channel if you're new. Welcome back to my channel if you're not. Either way, really appreciate you watching this video. If you do enjoy this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and hit the notification bell so I can let you know when new content is released. But let's get into the video. So the last video I did was on the GH5 and why I think it's still a great DSLR camera in 2021 and you can find that video here. This video follows on from that really. I'm just going to go through the lenses that I'll be using with my GH5 in 2021. But these lenses can be used with any Micro Four Thirds camera. I'm going to go through the lenses and show you why they're in my kit bag. So we're going to start off with the Leica Sumalux 12mm lens. It's a native Lumix lens, 12mm f1.4 great low light lens. So this is the most expensive lens that I use with the GH5. It retails around 949 Great British Pounds. Not quite sure that is in dollars, but it'd be a similar amount. So it is quite an expensive lens and a bit of an investment, but I do use this lens a lot of the time. So I wanted a decent lens for my YouTube channel and as a wide angle lens for weddings and music videos that I shoot. So I bit the bullet and I invested a bit of money into this wide angle lens and it is an amazing lens. It's the lens I usually use for my YouTube videos. At the moment I've swapped it out for a different lens which I'll show you in a minute. So it's a super sharp lens. And it's the only wide angle lens for a four thirds camera really that has all the specs that this lens has. F1.4, so really good in low light. It's got the option for autofocus, which is great. So I can autofocus this when I'm doing the vlogs. It's just a lens with a really nice sharp image. Because it's got the really low f-stop of 1.4, it means that when I make my YouTube videos, I can get a bit of separation between me and the background as you want the primary focus of the video to be you or me in this case then it's good to have a little bit of separation between you and the background so you get a nice bit of separation with this lens now when i'm shooting like wide angle scenes outside venue shoots and all that sort of thing you don't really need the bokeh you just want everything in the image to be in focus if you're shooting a venue or whatever you want the whole venue to be in focus not just parts of it or if you're shooting a crowd of people then you want everyone to be in focus not just certain people so when you're shooting outside at weddings then the f1.4 isn't as important but what's great about this lens it's when it gets a bit darker late at night when I'm doing the first dance. I can put this on the gimbal. I can put my GH5 on the gimbal with this lens. I get some really nice sharp images of the first dance on the gimbal. And because it's a GH5 and the GH5 isn't brilliant in low light, then having the low f-stop really helps me to get some decent footage. So that's the main reason I got it really. So I could use it in low light with the GH5 for first dances or couple shoots when the sun's going down, all that sort of thing. So that's my wide angle lens, my wide angle lens of choice in 2021. It is quite expensive, £949 new. You might be able to get a better deal second hand, but you will be making a bit of an investment if you do go for this wide angle lens. But I'm going to show you a cheaper option. But to do this, I'm just going to have to switch out quickly. So let me just switch around. Okay, so now I am shooting with the 12 millimeter, which I've just reviewed for you. And this is the 14 millimeter 2.5 that I was using before. So if you're looking for a more budget option for a wide angle lens with a micro four thirds camera, then this one is excellent. The main reason I went for the one that I'm shooting with now is just the low light capabilities of the f1.4. This is f2.5, still not too bad in low light, but 2.5, not quite as good as the 1.4. 14 millimeter, so 28 millimeter equivalent. So not quite as wide as the 12 millimeter, but not far off. But look how small it is. It's a bit like a pancake lens. Um, but you can pick one of these up for 249 new, and probably a little bit cheaper second hand. So that's great value for a wide angle lens. And if you're not worried about shooting indoors with it, or not too concerned about low light situations with your micro four thirds camera, then this one is an excellent option. 
look how small it is. Stick that on a gimbal, you won't even notice it's there. So I used to use this one all the time in the past until I got that one. Highly recommend that one if you're on a bit more of a budget. So I'm just gonna switch back. Okay, so now we're back shooting with the 14 millimeter, which I've just done the review on. And this is the 12 millimeter that I was shooting with before. So they're the two wide angle lenses that I would recommend. I use a 12 millimeter 1.4 most of the time, but there's nothing wrong with the 14 millimeter 2.5. It's just not quite as good in low light, but other than that, great lens. Okay, so the next lens that I'm gonna show you is the Leica Sumalix 25 millimeter. So another native Lumix lens. Uh, this one's not quite as expensive though. You'll be able to pick one of these up for around 254 pounds, I believe. F1.4 again, equivalent of a 50 millimeter, which is traditionally the very popular focal length. So I use this most of the time for details and things like that at weddings. It's got a really nice shallow depth of field, so I can really home in on my details and blur out the background, which is what you want. So the attention is on the detail and not the background. And again, really nice, small, portable lens that I can put on my gimbal. I tend to shoot most, most of my gimbal couple shots with the wider angle lens, just so that I know that I'm getting everything in, I can always crop in on it later. Now with this one, if you're gonna use it outside, then you will wanna get an ND filter for it to get the full effect. Otherwise you'll bring the, have to bring the F dot right up to compensate with the light and you'll lose all the bokeh. So get yourself an ND filter and then you can still get that nice bokeh outside. You can get the ND filters relatively cheap. I'll put some links in the description below. But yeah, that's my 25 millimeter lens use it for wedding details and on band shoots and things like that. So great lens to have, relatively inexpensive compared to the other lens. So that's lens number two, my 50 millimeter equivalent for a micro four thirds in 2021. That's lens number three actually, I've done two wide lenses, didn't I? The next two lenses aren't native Lumix lenses and you are gonna need a Metabone speed booster adapter to use these lenses. In the video I did on the GH5. I did go into the Metabone speed booster a little bit, but if you haven't seen that video, basically this speed booster enables you to use Canon lenses, which also means that you can use Sigma lenses and Tamron lenses with your GH5. So it opens up a lot more lenses for you to be able to use with the GH5. Lumix lenses are great, but they're quite expensive. Sigma and Tamron lenses tend to be a little less expensive um, and you get more of a range. So what this also does is it gives you an extra stop of light. So these two lenses I'm going to show you now are f2.8, but in effect with the speed booster, they become f1.8. If you had an f1.8, it would become an f1.2, so super low light. So definitely worth getting one of these. They are a bit pricey. Now I did say in the GH5 video, I thought they're about 499. They're not, they used to be, but they're more around 379 these days. And um, so, still quite expensive but a good investment if you want to be able to use a selection of lenses with the gh5 instead of having to rely on the native ones so the speed booster just clips onto the lens and then that just clips onto your gh5 or your micro four thirds camera the first lens that i'm going to show you is this sigma 17 to 50 millimeter so it's the equivalent of like 35 to 100 millimeter in a full frame i don't use this lens as much anymore i used to use this all the time before i got the 25 millimeter but i don't use it as much these days it's not quite as sharp as the lumix lenses that i've just showed you but it is very versatile so you can use it for a wide range of focal lengths from 35 up to 100 or 17 to 50 in a four thirds What's good about this lens, especially at weddings, picking off guests, getting crowds of people. You can zoom in and out on the focal range on this one relatively easily and quickly without having to swap over lenses all the time. So when I've got a crowd of people or I'm doing group shots or whatever, I quite often use this lens just because it's easier. And still it's a decent lens, but just not quite as sharp as the Lumix lenses. Still rate it as a lens and it's still always in my camera bag. So. That's the fourth one, I believe. And the fifth and final one is my long range zoom. I'll be honest, when I was first looking to get a zoom, I just wanted to get one that was as cheap as possible, but, but did the job. I use it for shooting the bride and groom from the back of the room at wedding ceremonies or for toasts 
uh, speeches when I'm shooting the speaker. I can get them from the back of the room without having to get in the way. So that was my main purpose for getting this zoom lens. So I wanted something that was okay, but it didn't have to be top of the range. Obviously the Sony zoom lenses are mega expensive. This one's £269. Now, what I didn't mention about the last Sigma lens is it's got also got optical stabilisation, which is good. So if you move the camera around a lot, it's got stabilisation within the lens itself. So that's always nice to have. This one hasn't, but this one's always going to be on a tripod. I'm never going to have it on a gimbal. I've no need to. So I don't really need that extra stabilisation. It's going to be on a, on a tripod fixed most of the time so I wasn't too bothered about stabilization this one's 50 to 150 so the equivalent of 100 to 300 um, millimeter and it retails at about 269 pounds I believe I'm not sure if you can get them new anymore I think you have to get them second hand now I could be wrong there um, 269 pound for a zoom lens is nothing I mean that's really good value 2.8 so it's a sigma lens so i have to use a speed booster but that does bring it down to a sort of equivalent of a 1.8 so again i can use it in low light I can use it for speeches and toasts where it's relatively low lit so i mean it's a little bit soft and it's quite hard to focus a bit like the other sigma but it's still decent i still use it all the time and the equivalent of 300 millimeter is is a hefty zoom it means i can stand right at the back of the ceremony get the bride and groom without getting in anyone's way, which is always the aim. So it's a decent lens. It's really done me well, but it's just not the sharpest. So this year I'm probably going to be invested in a more expensive zoom lens. that's a little bit sharper, um, but I'm still going to keep hold of this one. It's a decent lens. Still glad that I've got it in my bag. So I just went down the beach earlier so I could do some comparison shots for you, just so you can see what the different focal lengths look like. So I just shot the local pier from quite a distance away. This is just so you can see the difference between the focal lengths. So they're the five lenses that I'm going to be using in 2021. I might add to these lenses at some point. If I do, I will give you an update on that for sure. Now the one on the camera at the moment, the 2.5 14 millimeter lens. When I do ceremonies or speeches, sometimes I need two wide angle lenses. So I'll have this on one camera, usually the G7 or another GH5 and the 12 millimeter on the GH5. So still a use for that one. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. Please do give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment below. Let me know what lenses you're using in 2021. If you agree with me, if you don't agree with me, let's just start a conversation. Leave a comment below and let's all learn from each other. Trying to build a bit of a community on my way to that thousand subscribers at the moment, which I'm really happy about. Um, 2021 should be good. So if you're not already, please do subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so I can let you know when new content is released. Releasing content on a Monday and Thursday at the moment, gear tech tutorials, reviews, got some playlists set up so it's easy to navigate around my channel. So it'd be really great to have some new faces on board. But that's it for this one. I'm gonna catch you in the next one.